In those who want good interaction, start your video. If you are not bed today, you are not combed your hair since one month. If you are not gone outside your house since one year, you are still sleepy, then you can keep your camera off and you know what is your diagnosis. Now, <laughs> very good. So now start writing. What are the symptoms or conditions people feel when they have emotional turbulence? Okay. What happens when you are hurt, when you are betrayed, when you go through some emotional drama? Right. What are the symptoms you express? What are the emotional conditions you express? What are the emotional turbulence you go through? Start writing in the chart. You can mention about yourself. Okay. So like these are the things you have experienced over your time. Right. Loneliness, anger, you feel hurt, you feel depressed, you worry, you start thinking, you will stress, withdrawn, anger, you feel insecure, depressed, isolated, uh, your camera becomes off. You feel unhappy, you become hopeless, okay? You feel not motivated, you are like zombie, okay? So walking and you don't know what you're doing, where you are living and what you're doing. So it feels like you have a broken heart, broken soul, right? All these things, why this is happening in your life? Frustration, helplessness, complex heart, grief, stress eating, okay? Stress eating, stress not eating, all those. Anxiety, stress, depression, grief, low confidence, low self-esteem, trust issues, relationship issues, fear of unknown, thinking, worrying of anything and everything. Right? Why these are happening? It was not happening to you when you were a child. It was not happening to you one time when you were probably a teenager. right? So remember what was the timeline you had? What is the time that you started having all these issues? So that is the start of your emotional trauma, okay? This emotional trauma can be because of some external factor or it can be because of some internal, right? No need to write. Pay attention first now, okay? Focus here. So what can be external factor? External factor can be breakup, school breakup, huh? boyfriend, girlfriend. In the sixth standard, they broke up, so heartbreak. So <clears throat> teacher scolded, betrayed by a friend, Bitted by a business partner, fired from your job, business could not succeed. You were um, humiliated or embarrassed, right? Disloyalty by the partner, family member, okay? You lost someone in your life, right? Either there's someone goes to a distance for education, emptiness syndrome, right? It is a grief or that someone is permanently lost from your life either because of the relationship is broken or because someone is no more. All those things are the external factors that lead to emotional trauma. And all these emotional traumas, they represent in your life, either through emotions or through physical. So we will see how it represents. Okay. Number two, internal factors. So these internal factors can be some diseases. One of the common is thyroid. Another is anemia, some vitamin deficiencies or gastrointestinal trouble, very common, either constipation or frequent diarrhea or infection, or some allergy to some food substance. One of the another reason is wrong parenting. Okay. So your parents teach you something, the parents scold you, they do not allow you to touch certain things, they do not allow you to experiment certain thing. Okay. So there is an ache. What is the cost of ache? Six rupees. Right. As a child, you wanted to play with this ache. And in that play, you would have broken this. But your parents said, hey, do not touch that egg, you will break it. How much money she saved? She saved six rupees. But in this six rupees, you could have done that experiment. That something which looks hard outside can be very fragile. And you learn to experiment that this egg is something which you eat as a hard. But when you drop it uncooked, it breaks. All those experiments you could have done as a child many experiments and the cost of that experiment is only six rupees, right? So grow, when you grow, then you do not, you are afraid to experiment because it will, 
ask you to spend some money when you grow you are af- afraid to take any risk of changing a job starting your own because you are afraid to lose 6 rupees you understand so this is just a very minor and small thing what your mother has done okay you go to a shopping mall your mother said hey do not touch that and then every time you are afraid of touching something right so there are many things sometimes your parents scold because you score less sometimes your parents invalidate you okay you come and say i hate my teacher and your parents say hey no no it cannot happen you cannot say that hey, why you are saying this you should listen why your child is saying this okay i don't want to school no no you have to go to school otherwise right all those things so this is all, another reason for bad parenting is another reason for emotional traumas okay so external factors internal factors in internal factors the disease or the conditions okay thyroid anemia vitamin deficiencies constipation diarrhea frequent infections or some chronic disease second is bad parenting and third is low emotional bank balance okay so when you have low emotional bank balance have you seen that there are some people who have high threshold for pain okay you insult them and they will laugh okay and there are some people you don't insult but they feel very bad okay right and then there are people who who can put a pin they can prick themselves with a pin and there is no pain but there are some people if you touch them with your nail they are like hey what you did to me i'm going to kill you right so there are over sensitive people why because their emotional bank balance is very low right so emotional bank balance emotional quotient when you have low emotional quotient you have low threshold for pain either emotional pain or physical pain okay someone gets betrayed in business someone gets fired from a job they rise back again either they start on their own or they rise back again with a good job right so they have a high emotional quotient but someone who has low emotional quotient they will succumb to that okay they will end okay and someone who has a very low emotional quotient they will end their life okay so how much time you take to recover from a catastrophic event it depends on your emotional bank balance okay so that is why it is very important to improve your emotional bank balance so what is happening is this external factors this intrinsic factors these internal factors are of three types one is disease condition second is bad parenting and third is low emotional bank balance all these things they are leading to emotional traumas and these emotional traumas they represent themselves in our life as two things one is in the physical form and second is in the emotional form physical form means you have hypochondriac symptoms okay you have pain all over your body except your hair except your tongue there is a pain everywhere in the body right you have seen some people they complain of pain yeah some people they have migrating pain sometimes they have pain in the hand then second hand then limb all those some people they have pain in a back or stomach or somewhere and they don't know they have done ct scan mri they have done all the things they don't know what is happening all this emotional trauma that is leading to the pain okay the second is emotional pain this was physical pain second is emotional pain now emotional pain is how it is represented it is represented with anxiety stress fear irritability okay mood swings sleepless nights low confidence low uh, self esteem trust issues relationship issues okay panic attacks all those so you are having expressing your trauma with emotions okay and what these two things what is happening is it is impacting your life it is causing dysfunction in the society you are not able to perform well for yourself you are not able to take care for yourself you are losing your interest and you are losing interest in the serving the society you are losing interest in doing job or earning money you are losing interest in maintaining relationships you have relationship issues stress issues you have frequent fights you are feeling lonely right either you don't have uh, friends or your friends leave you or your marriage is right all those things th- that is reflected so all these symptoms either physical pain or emotional pain they are reflected in your relationships 
you are earning earning and your personal health right so if you want to heal these all three when you see someone that they have relationship issues so obviously you will do marriage counseling okay but you need to identify whether what was the emotional trauma that is leading to it okay when someone has uh, emotional turbulence anxiety stress depression fear zombies broken heart broken soul yeah some people are laughing when i say zombie very good so it shows what you are either you have a zombie at your home or you are gone to that place it's absolutely okay because you are living a human being life and it is full of emotional traumas it is expected to happen anyone who says that they want a perfect life they should go to the venus and start living there on earth the life is imperfect you are going to have ups and downs you are going to have unhappiness sadness low mood and you are going trying to achieve your happiness okay you cannot have a perfect life you need to try something Okay. So all these things, it, you need to find out what is the emotional trauma. So when you ask a client, okay, tell me which was the timeline when you were feeling good, right? When you were young, or six months back, one year back, you did not had this issue. So they will be able to tell you. Then they will be. You will ask what happened during those times. Okay, spouse betrayed you, or had a broken relationship. or failed exam failed business failed job all those things right so you will be able to identify what is those emotional traumas it is very important to find out this emotional traumas now emotional traumas are of three types emotional traumas are of three types one is they are deep buried inside the client has moved forward and you don't want to trouble the client anymore right so there have been certain instances which you overcame you moved forward in your life and now you have started your new life you don't want to touch this emotional trauma okay because it will lead to havoc in your present life it is better to be keep buried as a psychologist or a psychotherapist you will not try to touch this okay you don't want to heal everyone you don't want to heal everything so the second type of emotional trauma is the emotional trauma which is channelizing you to do good things you were fat that's why someone bullied you in your school or you had a broken relationship because of that now you became super model or you are looking very good you look star someone who was removed from a art class because what dumb artist okay founded the world disney someone who had who was left by his girlfriend became president of us right someone who was fired from every job or multiple jobs started own company and became mark cuban elon musk okay was not able to find jobs someone who was labeled a dumb kid got a nobel prize so what is happening you are channelizing your energy your emotional trauma as a energy to do something good okay. you were a boy you were a young and you wanted to marry a girl but father of the girl said you are very poor you are not earning anything and that's why you could not marry your love so you started earning more right so all those emotional traumas are good you are you were bullied in your class because you were fat chubby or not good looking then you started exercising and you now become super model okay very good the number third emotional trauma is something that needs healing number 1 which is deep buried you don't heal number 2 which is channelizing your energy to do good you don't heal number 3 number 3 emotional trauma which is leading to your present symptoms present dysfunction right you are living like a zombie you are afraid of anything and everything you have a broken heart you are, you have fear stress anxiety all those things relationship stress issues you cannot trust someone now because you were betrayed earlier 
so all those things uh, if it is you can identify what are those emotional traumas then you need to heal them okay so there is a program which i take live sessions demo sessions psychotherapy program on sunday i do the demo techniques right so in that you learn these three things one is how to identify what is the emotional trauma leading to dysfunction in your present life how to heal those traumatic memories so there are worksheets for this okay then there are techniques psychotherapy techniques to heal those traumatic memories to replace those traumatic memories and to heal you from the root cause to heal you completely okay without medicines then number 3 there are psychodynamic techniques to increase your emotional bank balance so all these three things you learn in the sunday program there i give the demo of the technique you watch my demo you experience the effect of the demo then you can practice on the clients which i give you okay so that becomes like a hands on practice of the learning what you had the detail you can read in the book you can whatsapp me separate calls yeah questions till now please ask so there are some students who are waiting since 15 days or 20 days for the book the new edition book it has come saturday and it will be dispatched dispatch already today so all of you will get this week those who are for the future batch you will get the book wait okay wait questions if you have a difficult question then i will ask you to study more if you ask some basic question easy question foolish question stupid question i like you you are favorite because everyone has that foolish question but people are afraid to ask okay Preeti has an interesting question. How neuroplasticity works? Okay, so there is a mention in my book about neuroplasticity. How do you? Please, everyone, stop writing the questions for now. Pay attention. You can write your questions after a few minutes after I answer this question. What is neuroplasticity? You save your memories. You save. what you have gone through your events of your life episodes as memories as images right that's why when you have flashbacks you see the images you don't read your memories okay right you always see the images so these images are store memories are stored in the form of images and to form these images your brain has formed synapses what are synapses the two neurons they come together and there is a neurochemical network they form you have a predefined set of work pattern you have a predefined set of living life you have predefined set of how what are your habits hobbies what is your daily ritual how you react to certain scenario what is your navigate to defense mechanism what is your coping mechanism all these are reflected in this different synapses okay in neuroplasticity what we do is through the use of certain techniques which are our copyright techniques you break this synapses and form new synapses when you break those synapses you break your old habits old rituals you break your uh, traumatic memories you break your negative defense mechanism and negative coping mechanism and then you form new synapses new memories new images new habits new rituals and correct reaction mechanism coping mechanism defense mechanism right Anushri has asked an interesting question. If there is a trauma, should uh, if a trauma that is second type of trauma that is leading to you become a good achiever, should we heal that? No, that's good. You know, same thing is with OCD. If you have OCD and you are very systematic in your work, if you are a good painter, if you are a good writer, or you are in a role which involves arranging things systematically, either files. or everything systematic systematic right and if you treat ocd you lose this gift right so you don't need to treat your ocd completely 
you need to manage your ocd so that it doesn't cause a dysfunction so what are the things you need to manage in ocd you need to manage your anxiety you need to manage your irritability you need to manage your depression episodes and you need to focus yourself channelize yourself that you use your ocd for good things learning new thing or maybe earning right you will learn ocd in ocd class So, Nisha has asked an interesting question. What are the other treatments for emotional trauma? So, the treatment option for emotional trauma are psychodynamics, experiential psychodynamics, and psychotherapy. In psychotherapy, you learn two things. One is cognitive behavior therapy, and second is subcognitive behavior therapy. Okay. Now, what is cognitive behavior therapy? Cognitive means you are aware of it. So, you tell the client... You think in this pattern, okay? Stop thinking in that pattern. You give some worksheets to the client. You give them some assignment, okay? In Sunday psychotherapy program, you learn both, sub cognitive and subcognitive. But what is the problem with cognitive? You need a motivated client, right? Who will follow your assignments, who will do the assignment, who will write assignments, who will complete worksheet. And you have to tell the client, okay, you stop thinking this way, you think this way. Someone who is already having fear, anxiety, stress, depression, they don't have motivation to do that. Okay. So, and what is happening is they are resisting themselves. Someone who is depressed, they want to feel depressed. They are happy like that. Okay. They want to feel happy with that. So they romanticize their depression. So they, their brain will tell, no, no, you will not do next step to feel good. Right. You may tell there are in the book, there are 20 to 50 tips given to overcome depression. You tell all of them, but the depressed clients will try to find excuse not to do that. Right. Same is with all emotional turbulence. So what you need is you need to remove the cognitive function. Okay. The client is resisting you because they are thinking, okay, you tell them something, they evaluate. Okay. Whether it's a good decision, bad decision, I should do it, not do it. What are the excuses? I should not do it. Right, all this cognitive function they are using, so you cut them. How do you cut? You use subcognitive behavior therapy. Subcognitive means you act at the subconscious level, even if the client is not cooperative. For example, there are depressed clients; they don't want to talk to you. So there are techniques to open up their mind. There are techniques to open them up. There is a child uh, had certain issues now not talking. Okay, so there are techniques to do that. In subcognitive, you reach at the subconscious level. You cut the cognitive function and you talk to the subconscious mind. So to re there are two things now, two steps. One is to reach to the subconscious level and second is talking to the subconscious mind. Right? So there are techniques which are involved in the Sunday program for that. Both the things you will learn. And the other one is psychodynamics, which I, uh, which I explained in neuroplasticity. Okay. So, Dr. Pranjali, very good question. So, there are buried emotions, okay, which the client has moved forward. How to identify that these are buried and how to not touch them? Okay. The, these are the things you learn as you get into the psychotherapy learning. Sunday class is for people, those who enroll for Sunday program. Usha has asked an interesting question. So only the client with the third type of trauma will come to us. No, the client comes to us. They don't know which type of trauma they have or whether they have trauma. They come to you. Now it is up to us to identify, okay, this trauma is leading to this. This trauma is leading to this. This trauma is something that needs healing. And we will work on this trauma. You have to tell the client and then you have to make the plan for next five sessions, 10 sessions. Exactly in psychotherapy, what you are learning, Usha, Usha, you are also in that batch, okay? So what you learn is, uh, you learn what, how to make the plan for five to ten sessions. Second session, third session, exactly which technique you will do, what you will do, which worksheet you will use, 
and what are these next three techniques you will use over the next five to 10 sessions. You learn in that. For Sunday class, you can WhatsApp me. Leela has asked an interesting question. Thus, complexity varies according to gender. I would prefer not to answer this question. You can read the answer in the book because majority of audience is female here. But you know, the PTSD, depression, right? The extent of bipolar disorder, they, how much they will be visible in day-to-day -day life, okay? How much it will impact your life. It depends on your gender, your education and your socio-economic status, your earning, it depends, right? A military personnel, a veteran coming from the war, if it is a US soldier who is on the road and not getting supported by government, right? They have more PTSD. A Indian soldier coming from the war because Indian government takes care of them for lifetime. So they will not have PTSD that prolonged or they will have PTSD to the less extent. I might have missed certain message chat in the beginning. So Isha has asked another interesting question. If the child has moved away from the emotional trauma, why would they come to us? They do not come to you with this diagnosis. That is a something you diagnose. If they are coming to you, it means they are having present emotional turbulence. Very clear. If your client comes to a psychologist or psychotherapist, they have some trouble. They have some issues. And it is your duty to identify which, which are those emotional events, which are those traumatic events or circumstances that is leading to their present dysfunction in life. We will have a class on PTSD, OCD, suspect disease wise topics we will have. Okay. Any questions anyone has? Till now. Then we do two things. Okay. For next half hour, we can play a game, diagnosis, diagnosis. Right. Then third, um, in next half hour, we can play the game uh, scenarios. Okay. The child is doing something as a parent or as a teacher, what you will do? Which game you want to play? Child parent or diagnosis, diagnosis? Child parent scenarios. Okay. Everyone is like child parent, child parent, child parent. Very good. Okay, so we are going with child parent scenarios. Everyone stop writing the chat. Now, you will answer after 30 seconds of thinking. Right? You are a school teacher. And you have a uh, social function, you have an event, right? Where there is a dance by all the children okay there is one children and you are given the assignment that you have to practice your dialogues right and the first time the child does not do good second time now uh, you tell the client uh, you tell the child that you sit there one hour or you go home and as a student's assignment you will memorize your dialogues and come tomorrow right? next day the child comes and not able to talk, not able to okay, say things on stage. And when you ask, have you read the dialogues? The child says, no. What will you do? 
options. You remove the child from the play. You call the parents. You ask the child to sit down now and memorize the dialogues. Direct parents. Okay. Good. Option four, someone wrote, ask why you could not rem uh, memorize your dialogues. Right. I gave you first chance. You did not do. Then I gave you complete whole day. And I can give this to some other student. Some other student would have probably done that. And because of this, the play is going to be affected because of you. So what is the reason you try to understand? So what you will try to explore is you will try to explore whether the child is uh, responsible. The child understands that uh, the sincerity or the importance of remembering the this thing. Whether the child is sincere or whether the child has interest in the drama, interest in participation. If there is no interest in participation, it's easiest solution. You remove the child. There is no guilt. If the child is not sincere, not taking up the responsibility, you have to teach this child. If you do not work responsibly, you lose something in life. There is no again, 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 thousand times chance. Okay. As a teacher, I have to get this drama done by this group of students. Others are preparing, others are doing the assignment. If you are not able to do for whatever X, Y, Z reason, right, then you are not good enough to be part of the play. Why are you are doing this? Because in life, today you are a teacher. In future, the life will taste this child. The life will give one chance, second chance, ask this child to do the assignment, to work on something. And again, the child does not do that then the child should not expect that the life is going to give third chance. The life is not going to give you. You are going to get punished. You are going to, if life is good for you, if your teacher is good, the teacher may not punish you, but the teacher will take away this chance. The life will take away this chance. Right? Make hay when the sun shines. When you had the chance to perform in the drama, you memorize your dialogues. You be responsible. You be sincere. If you're not responsible, if you're not sincere to yourself, right, you are not good enough for the play. You are not good enough to take up the new opportunity which life is giving you. Right? Now the child may say that I had this trouble. We have to go out. There were relatives. My parents were fighting. I was uh, playing. No one cares. Okay. As a teacher, you may not say this to the child. But when you grow up, you cannot say that I could not perform well in the job. I could not perform well in my business. I could not do good with that client because that day I was absent for the class. Yeah, I did not read the book. Yeah, that's why I'm an average counselor. You cannot say that. You are supposed to do 10 things in your life to earn some money, to perform in your job. You cannot say that today you had a fight with your spouse and that's why you don't have a mood. No one cares. Go wherever you want, right? So the job is job. If some if a company paying you, they expect you to perform, right? Because that event is a temporary. The fight, the occasion, the festival, going outside, watching a movie, doing time pass, playing video game, that was a temporary event. That doesn't give you happiness. The real happiness is when you perform your duty. And as a child, you had a duty to memorize your dialogues and to perform well in the drama. The same duty you are supposed to perform when you grow older. Right? That time I will not be there. Your parents will not be there to tell you that you have to do this thing to succeed. You have to remove all those temporary happiness or temporary distractions. Okay, Fight, social events, going out. And you have to put yourself for the other one. You like this answer? So you are balanced. You are not spoiling the child by giving unlimited chance. You are not being unfair to this child as well as other children, those who are working. 
and you are teaching this child a life lesson without being harsh, without traumatizing psychologically. <clears throat> you are a parent and your child comes home today very angry and furious and child says and throws the bag, throws the book and the child says, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. Normally, what is your reaction? Uh, please write down. What is your reaction normal? I don't want to give you options. This is happening with you every week, every month. This has happened with you also. So, you have to go. Otherwise, I will kill you. I will beat you. I will go and drop you there. I will not give you food. Your teacher will scold you. Okay. There are good parents who are trying to find what happened. What is the reason? Let's take a break. Wow, such a good parent. Huh? Your daughter must love you very much. Ask for the reason. <laughs> the, the child wants a break and you are giving. I will inform your principal to remove your name. Wow. Oh my God. So much threatening. Hitler. Yeah. What did you do? Hey, you are blaming the child. Huh? Shruti, that is so traumatic. So the child comes to you and says that I don't want to go to school. And you say, hey, what did you do? It means... Your child is a monster that the child must have done something wrong and that's why the child doesn't want to go home tomorrow or school tomorrow. My God. I, oh, I like this. Who is this? Rakesh. Very good, Rakesh. So uh, Rakesh is saying, I will acknowledge his feeling. Ask the child what happened. Tell me what happened. Yeah. So number one is to acknowledge. Don't invalidate the feeling. Right. Don't say that. Eh. What are you talking nonsense? You have to go to school. I will remove your name from the school. I will ask you to scrub utensils. I will uh, throw you out of your home. No food today. What are you talking Or the worst thing is to say, Oh no. You are my child. I know how monstrous child I have raised. So what have you done, my dear child? <laughs> that is the worst thing you can do. Okay. Yeah. So you acknowledge, validate the feeling. Yeah, tell me what happened here. Yeah. Okay, so it happens sometime. Tell me what happened. I will support you. See, the child wants support. The child wants someone to listen, right? So listen to the child. If the child is complaining about teacher, acknowledge. Don't say random. No, no, the teacher is good. Next time, the child is not going to complain you. Okay, because you don't validate the feeling, right? If the child says that boy is beating me, so you don't ask. You must have done something wrong. It means your child is so monster that other child is good. Only if your child does something wrong, the other child is beating. It may be possible that other child is monster, right? Okay. Don't be, uh, don't have such a low self-esteem that you think that you are raised a monster. Right? So it reflects what kind of thought you have about yourself. Very good. If the child says, no, um, uh, I could not do well, someone is bullying or the child is not talking, right? So that is the time you say that it used to happen with me sometime in school, right? One day it happened this. So tell me what are the reasons? So you start poking up the child. If the child doesn't come up and gives you the reason, then you start poking up the child. But before that, the number one thing is the child has come from the school. Very angry, furious, thrown the bag and everything. So you hug the child and say that, I'm with you. Okay. I'm your mother. I'm your father. Whatever is it, you tell me. I will support you. It is your mistake. Other one's mistake. I don't care. I will support you. You tell me. Number one step. Number two, give food. The child is hungry. Firstly, give some food. Okay, first we eat something. Okay, if you want, you can come with me for cook, cooking, join, or I have made something for you, or what do you want? Typically, the children will say Maggie. So that's the easiest thing you can do, right? Or children may say something, Domino's, so you can order something, right? So you feed the child. When stomach is full, the mind is free of tension. Then you talk the child when it is a half meal or after the meal, preferably, tell me what happened, right? How was this day today? Whatever happened, I will support you. Don't be afraid of me. I'm your mother. I'm your father, right? If you are not wrong, 
I will support you. If you are wrong, I will tell you what to do to improve us. If you committed some mistake, I will tell you how to rectify. If someone is troubling you, I will solve that. If required, I will come to your school. So you tell me truthfully what happened. Even if you are mistaken, you can tell me. Don't worry. Right? So the child has trust now. The child can able to at least 60 to 70 percent. The child is able to tell you the true story. What happened? Right? There was a boy. He pulled my pony and all those things. Okay. Okay. Fine. So you have to tell the child what to do next. Then their teacher scolded me without reason. Okay, so you have to tell the child that sometimes teachers they are they get hungry all this school and the small children they get uh, stressed out. They also and sometimes they don't have anything against you, but they find a random person to scold someone. Okay, just venting out. Or if someone is troubling you, then we will talk to the teacher. So you ask what was the trouble. Okay. So one day my daughter came to me and she said that, Papa, the boy behind me, he pulls my pony. Okay. So I told her that you tell him the exact segment what I tell you. So we practiced. Okay. So I became that boy pulling the pony and she is that girl sitting in front of me. And I said, you speak exactly what I say. And I said her that you tell this boy, Hey, your mother called me yesterday. And she said, you do susu pee pee in your bed. It's so traumatic. So the boy will go home, fight with his mother and say, why did you call my schoolmate and said that I do pee pee in the bed? Right? So what is happening is that what will happen the next step? This mother will come to the school and say that this girl has said this thing to my son. So first you teach your son how to become a boy, how to behave with girls, right? If you cannot behave well with the girls, when he grows up, if he teases the girls when he grows up, he will line behind bars, okay? If a father is like me or someone like, uh, <clears throat> maybe he will be beaten, okay? But I teach my child, a girl child, not to use physical weapon, to use mental weapon. Right? What is the biggest fear of this child? A nine year, six years old child. What is the biggest fear? His fear is mother. And his fear is that he may wet the bed or something, something story. Right? So this mother has to understand that she has to tell the his son, her son, not to misbehave with girls. Because this is going to affect his teenager and adult life. Okay. And I'm equipping my child that if a boy behaves bad with you, as a girl, you cannot get into physical fight. You should avoid as long as required. But if it is required, you should get all by means, right? And we do that rehearsal also. Yeah. So we do that rehearsal where we do all the fighting stuff. And I teach us some techniques to, right? So, but the number one step is psychological warfare, the mental war. Another way to damage anyone who is troubling you in class is to say other things, okay? Many things you can say. Anything which is embarrassing to a child, you can say that. Next time. Or simple, there is one more step, right? I have told. The number one step is to do like this. So a boy of nine years, a girl, another girl who is troubling of nine years, six years, they get frightened with this expression, right? So no one else has done with them. A classmate who is doing like this, right? So I asked, how do you feel? So my daughter said, it's very frightening, yeah? So the expression and this moment is very frightening, yeah? So you teach your child, so how to manage that? You don't get into this battle. Right? This is such a small battle. You could have, what you could have done, you could have gone to the teacher. You could have complained that this boy is pulling the pony and all. You don't need. You are equipping your child to manage her own battle. Right? So she can either talk to the teacher directly, the child herself, or she can deal with this boy 
directly. Barkha, very good question. Won't that leave a hurting mark on the other kid in his childhood? It should. <laughs> this child who is troubling a girl should learn a lesson early in his life to prevent becoming a monster. Yeah, so Manaswi has asked another question. So bullying other kids. So that you have to take care and explain. You should not use this weapon uh, for unnecessary reason. Yeah, you will use it when someone is troubling you. Sojanya has asked a very interesting question. We take that case study. Okay, your child asks you, Mama, how am I looking? Right. A simple question. Mama, am I looking fair today? Simple question. Right. So the root is this question. And as a parent, what do you answer? You have to be very careful then. So if you say, yes, you are looking fair today. It means if you look darker some days, right? it's not a good thing. So you have to say that Either you look fair or dark. What matters is the smile on your face. What matters is happiness in your heart. If you are happy in your heart, if you have a smile on your face, if you are friendly, if you are helping people, if you are talking, if you can express yourself, if you are doing your work, if you are, your work is your studies, if you are scoring good, you look good. Right? It's not necessary that you should be fair to look beautiful. The beauty is in the smile. It's in the heart. When you have happiness in your heart, your face will glow. You will look beautiful. Second is, <clears throat> am I looking beautiful today? Yes, you are looking beautiful today. But whatever you look, right? even if it is your natural, you look good. I like you the way you are. Even if you look bad, I like you. As a father, as a mother, you are the world to the child. If you say this statement that whatever way you look, I love you. Right? And whatever you are, either you wear good clothes, either you wear bad clothes. right? You look good. So what, what is happening is in the mind of the child, it is impregnated. It is written right? since childhood that clothes doesn't matter. Whatever clothes you wear, you your world, who is the world of the child? Parents. Your world likes you. So when they grow older, they feel that it doesn't matter so much how they are looking, how they carry themselves, how they behave with others. That is more important. right? If you have happiness in the heart, if you have smile on your face, if you are good with others, you are liked by others. Very good, Rakesh. Very good. Yeah, sometimes saying these big statements that inner beauty is more important, the child doesn't understand. What is the inner beauty here? I also don't understand. Okay, probably you also don't understand. Someone said that's why you're saying this. Okay, so what is important is your behavior. How you conduct yourself, how kind are you? The kindness in heart and happiness in heart, these are the two things most important to be liked by others. Right? A simple example. Someone uh, who was not good with you and today you have two chocolates or five chocolates. Right? So a very recent example. You have five chocolates with you. Right? And there were three friends you had. So you gave this chocolate to each of your friends and the fourth boy and fifth girl those who are not so good at terms with you right it happens huh? since early age so who is not in good terms with you comes to you and asks hey please give me this chocolate right so what are the options for you as a child as a child right what are the options you say hey get out you were bad with me I will not give you second you give it and then ignore it the third 
you don't give you ignore fourth you give it to someone else or you eat yourself and say mm. right what do you think you will say to your child what should you do fifth anyone else fifth so when this happened okay okay continue everyone start writing good morning very good morning exactly is the same thing i said right use this chocolate as a tactic to make a friend right someone was bullying you or someone was troubling you yesterday give them this chocolate and say now you behave good with me friends done but you don't start trusting them immediately okay you watch them so that next time if someone else is troubling you this same person most likely 50% chance this same person who was troubling you yesterday if someone is troubling you tomorrow this person will come to you and say hey why you are troubling her right and what you have done is you have converted a probable future enemy okay yeah or of bully to your friend right what did you do you had to share the chocolate and anyways you had that extra right who liked this answer if you liked it and you are going to follow it now okay so give give it and ignore it means you have given your something and you ignored it means you are lost see when you grow older what is example don't take it as a child as a school as a bully as a chocolate no when you grow older there are going to be people who will trouble you in your life at your workplace in your new family right there are going to be people how to manage these people they come to you one day for some help they come to you one day for a chocolate right for some help you help them and say next time you behave good with me right so what you have done you have done a trading you have traded something you had a chocolate for a friend right this is something a learning which you will apply in your workplace in your family life in your society Nitya is asking an interesting question. What if the child gets bullied because of the looks in the school? Okay, really long time. You need to take drastic measures. Okay, the parent will need to visit the school, talk to the principal, talk to the teacher, and say that this is wrong, traumatizing the child. Okay, in most of the schools they have anti-bullying policy. Many good schools they remove the child, those who are bullies. they remove the bullies from the school even single attempt right they have zero tolerance for that you will talk the next step is you will talk to the parent of the child right it needs a drastic interventions if you want to protect number 3 if you think that scenario is out of control nothing can be done you change the school okay because you don't want i tell you recently i had a one client okay she is now around 55 years of age her husband has extramarital affair at the age of 55 years she has son daughter in law right i did some psychotherapy and psychodynamic techniques and identified what was the reason she said that i could not win my partner okay because i have inferiority complex about my looks i said but you look decent enough good enough right even if you are 55 so she said no i was bullied in the school for my looks and college times right because of that she was not able to form a intimate connection with her husband and one of the major reason she blames herself that that is the reason why husband has strayed away in her marriage okay so there can be many things okay yeah. that the child is getting traumatized it is going to affect right it is going to affect self esteem confidence 
going for an interview, making good friends, making good network, having a good relationship. It is going to affect. So you need to work on. Malti Raj has asking interesting questions. If parents body shame the children, what should you do? Okay. That parent should resign from parenthood and give the child for adaptation. Any question or any case study which I have missed in the chart, because there are so many charts, some have buried deep inside the number one trauma. So if you want to bring it up, you can bring that trauma, that question, that case study, ask now. You can ask the real life case study what either you as a parent is facing or your child is facing. Ask. When you are asking smile also, the number of one most important quality for a good counselor is smile. Don't be like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Write down on the paper. I will read that. A stupid stenographer. Yeah. Or the client is talking and you are typing. Don't be that stupid counselor where the client is talking, you are writing or typing or you are like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Write on the paper. I will read it. Hey, what stupid. Why should the person pay you 1,000 rupees for that bad face? The person can go to home and see. Yeah. So the number one best uh, quality of a counselor is smile. Okay, there are a lot of questions now. We take that. What if the child wants uh, success all the time? Oh, I like this question, Usha. What if the child wants success all the time, even in the games? Yeah. So there are children who are so competitive, they want to win all the time and they want to win by any way, hook or crook or unethical or ethical, right? So there are two aspects. You teach the child how to celebrate success, right? Proportionate. Don't be disproportionate successful. Don't be disproportionate happy with your success. Number two, you teach the child how to accept your defeat gracefully right if you succeed it's good you involve others you celebrate you be happy if you get defeated accept it gracefully because that gives you an interest opportunity to introspect yourself why you failed why you got second rank and improvise on yourself so in the game of life it's not about the game of childhood in the game of life you are going to succeed sometimes, you are going to fail sometimes. When you do business, you are going to succeed and fail. When you are going for a job, you are going to fail certain times. That time you need to accept your defeat. Learn from it. Improve. Right? Practice. Sojan has asked an interesting question. How can we teach the joy of learning or enjoying subjects to children? I will give with one real example. So, a few months back, my daughter said, Papa, I don't like maths. If I start asking why, what happened, her mind will find reasons to support that theory. I don't want your mind to write something in your memory sheet. Okay. I want you to write the good thing what I'm going to tell you. So I said, actually, when you were a child, six months, you could not speak. You were one year child, you could not speak. But you used to count things. You were good in counting. And no one taught you how to count. Okay. So there are six toys. And you used to take one toy at a time and bring from here to here, right? And when it is the last toy, the sixth toy, you used to bring it here, then you don't go back. Because you know that there are six toys only. Even if you did not know what is counting, you do not know six, right? 
it means you are inherently good in maths right what you need is probably practice and maths is useful for all over life and it is my favorite subject so we will do one thing every day we will sit together half hour apart from your assignments and everything we will play with maths we will do competition whichever topic you like okay you like plus you like minus okay 10 digit plus 5 digit plus we will do competition who wins first so we start doing that right sometimes i win and sometimes she wins so most of the time she wins because you know uh, this new generation they are so good in maths even father cannot compete i used to score 100 marks in maths but new generation is very smart they are so good in maths so i am unable to compete with her and uh, so we keep the timer who will do first right and if a child comes if a friend comes to play we involve her also if come we will have a game of maths today right that is our appointment and we do very very fast so i do orally sometimes i use paper sometimes i do mistake right because it is supposed to happen and if i fail right if i do mistake i say okay can you tell me please which mistake i did because you know i don't know can you tell me what did i do okay hey you did very fast not tell me how did you do yeah so she is teaching me now yeah it's like papa it's not that way you know you did one silly mistake it was very easy okay fine you know this is difficult but i tell you one trick to do it she is telling me that like papa i like you right so suddenly a child who is who had that statement is now started teaching and taking interest to teach me how to do maths faster yeah here yeah, this is a complex question it is going to take time i don't think you are going to win i am going to win this time yeah so that's a challenge right and then suddenly she wins and that is a celebration yes i won yeah i beat my father wow that's good how did you do that okay but i i am defeated now but i'm not giving up right this complex sum i'm taking my time even if i am defeated but i am taking my time to complete it and i'm going to do it without errors and if i do some mistake i will take your help to resolve it right so she is learning that if you get defeated still you don't give up you finish your sum that is the important thing right okay if you lose in the race don't give up you have to finish your race if you do a mistake don't give up give it a next try try to learn from someone who has defeated you right so these are the learnings which comes So Tina has given a very interesting and a difficult case study, right? So, elder daughter, she is troubling the younger sister. When the younger sister cries, and you talk to elder daughter, hey, why you did this? She is like, you don't trust me. I have not done anything, and uh, she is lying. Okay, you know there is a root for this. it is a good possibility that when they were younger both of them right there was a episode that maybe a mosquito bit your younger daughter or your younger daughter was crying because she is hungry and you blame the elder daughter hey what did you do she is crying like anything she is stupid she was hungry that's why she is crying and sometimes children cry for no reason also don't blame the elder child right that's why you lost the trust second 
if your child, elder child says that I have not done anything, right? You have to trust it. You have to, even if the child has done something, you have to say, okay, I know you are a good sister. You will not trouble your younger sister. You will not do something to harm her. You know, few years back, you were of her, her age. And I used to protect you. I used to love you. I used to care for you. And some elder child, if they come from outside or your siblings or relatives, right? They also used to like you. Okay. I know you are not going to hurt your younger sister. So what you are doing is you are building a trust. You are putting a narrative in her head that you are a trustworthy child. I trust you. You are a caring elder sibling and you are going to protect your younger sibling. You like it? Ankita has asked an interesting question. How to deal with someone who has very less EQ, emotional quotient? Okay. There are psychodynamic techniques to increase your emotional quotient. These are copyrighted by me. If you want to learn that, you can do that in Sunday program. So Dipti has asked multiple time questions. Probably she has a child who is into higher grades and struggling with maths or interest in studies. Okay. I tell you a very real scenario. If I get half mark less, I used to cry. Okay. How did I got half mark less or one mark less? And next, but I never fought with the teacher. Why you deducted my marks? I used to think why it happened and I used to improve on that. This story is since 8th standard. Before 8th standard, I was not an average person. I was not an average student. I was a very weak student. Okay. Out of 100, 35 is passing most of the schools. Yeah. Those days at least. So I used to get 35, 36 marks till 7th standard. Then I decided myself that I need to work. I need to put my efforts. So during the summer vacation, between 7th and 8th standard, I finished maths. That was my weak subject. Okay. So during 7th and 8th standard, there is a summer vacation. right? So I finished maths of 8th standard. And suddenly I became strong in maths. It started developing interest. One day, one semester exam by mistake, by real mistake. I had no intention to score full marks. I had no intention to be topper of the class. I topped the class. That was the chocolate for me. Okay. The tiger, when test the blood, it wants more blood. So it was like, oh, it feels so good if I score 100 marks. It feels so good if I'm the topper of the class. So I want to be topper of the class every time. To come to that one success, okay, you need to work. And if the child is not able to work because of the parenting, wrong parenting, I will tell you which wrong parenting happens, okay? You need to sit with the child. If you cannot sit with the child, give the child some extra tuition, help the child, whatever you can, okay? Right? Now, bad parenting. Why the child is not self-motivated to do own homework to improve? Yes, that is a question. I have to scold the child to study. I have to scold the child to go to school. I have to wake the child up to go to tuitions. Why? Because you are a wrong parent. You are a bad parent. Right? If the child doesn't wake up, misses the school, it's good. Right? You should not wake up the child and say that, beta, it's time to get up and go to school. You tell the child, it is your responsibility. If you want to go to school, you go to school. If you don't want to go to school, no problem. If your uh, name gets removed from this school, we will put you into corporation school or maybe a local language school, okay? Where all the children of the maids, they come up. You can play with them, yeah? So if you want to return this school, if you want to earn more money, if you want to be successful, if you want to buy the toys which you want, right? You study. You go to school on your own. You wake up. If you get late, you get punished. I'm not getting punished. Why do I care if you get punished in the school for getting late? 
it is your punishment your school you are late right my job is to see that your food is ready your bus is there and your fees is paid it is your job to wake up in the morning get ready go to school pack your bag i'm not going to pack your bag because if you miss one book the teacher is going to scold you and that is this your suffering not my suffering right that is the punishment you have to go so make your child responsible from the beginning okay when the child is watching tv don't get emotional and say oh my god how much tv you watch and how what will happen tell the child why they should study and watch less tv why you don't teach the child and the young age uh you don't dictate the child to do something for their life because i tell you the reason when they grow older they go to college they go to hostel after they finish their studies when they start working they doing job or they start their business or practice they have to put their own efforts no one is going to come no one is going to come and tell you that stop watching the tv no one is going to come and tell you get up from the bed no one is going to tell you get ready and go to school or business or office right you have to do on your own right and that is something you have to do since the beginning of the childhood child going to school is not your responsibility yeah it is a responsibility of the child to wake up on time go to tuition prepare the bag pack the bag get ready if you want to go dirty if you want to go without tie without belt get scolding up to you right next day the child will improve on own the teacher scolded me yeah why you missed your <laughs> good from tomorrow you will not miss yeah and you will not remind the child so don't think for the child as a child you think that when this child will grow older are you going to be there to tell the child okay get up beta now it is time to go office yeah stop watching the mobile now it is time to earn money no one is going to come when they go to college no one is going to tell them that stop this distractions running behind girls running behind boys watching movies and uh, playing things and focusing on your studies so that is something if you want to teach them that don't do in the college that thing you have to teach at the school days be responsible for yourself but it doesn't mean that you leave them on the air it doesn't mean ki ah uh, do whatever you want yeah hopeless yeah so don't do that so kiran kiran has a interesting topic okay this neat kota children okay these are extremely aspirational children and even if the child is not aspirational the parents are very aspirational these are failed parents they could not achieve in anything in their life they could not fulfill their parents dream they did not study so they want to leave that their parents dream through their children they did not study they did not do hard work so they want their instead of me what to do you go to kota do you put hard work yeah they want the child to put so much rigor number one you ask yourself whether your child is capable of competing that okay that intellectual thing is there or not not all children are same no right number two does the child have aptitude for that child aspires to do something else okay or become a doctor and you are putting for engineer okay child aspires to become a business uh, analyst or a ca or something else manager and you are putting for no 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 everyone is going for neat you also go and uh, die in the hell okay so it's not that the aptitude is not there number 3 does the child has inner motivation to do things okay peer pressure is one there are parents who send the children to gota kota because you know because everyone is studying my child will also study hey get out the child doesn't have inner motivation you don't have inner motivation yeah you never studied on your own your child is never studied on own and you think that 
that will only cause peer pressure. Maybe a good peer pressure, but it is not good. What you need is internal motivation. If you have external pressure, yeah, forcing yourself continuously, you have to perform, you have to do good, you have to study, even if you don't have will to do that, you will succumb. And that's why children commit suicide. Right? We will have a session one day on what are the ways to identify suicidal signs, early signs of suicide in adolescence and how to prevent that. Okay. So it's neat is not the only success. Lacks of students apply. Tens thousand students, they appear exam and only hundreds get selected. All other people, all other children, they are traumatized of the failure. What they could do, they could select a battle which is less competitive. Okay. They could have selected an exam which is less competitive, which matches their aptitude, which matches their intellectual and everything, right? Which matches your financial budget also. If the child, and I tell you one thing, right? If someone wants to do engineering from the best college, wants to score 100 marks. That is the cutoff, 100 marks. 99.9 .9 is the failure, right? 100 marks. It's not necessary to go quota. Even if the third class teacher you have in your uh, city, with the help of that third class teacher also, you can get into the best school. If the child is motivated, if the child has aptitude, if the child has will, if the child has persistence, right? to do uh, things, whatever it takes, right? So whatever it takes, including the sacrifices and all the studies. Neha has asked an interesting question. Uh, teacher says the child is bossy, whereas someone else says it is a leadership quality. So it needs nurturing the child. Okay. Telling the child that every child comes from different background, different working style. Okay. So you give some examples. See, this was what you did was a bossy. And this what you did is leadership quality. Right. So you nurture the child. It involves mentoring and good parenting. Someone has written nowadays school uh, call parents for everything instead of punishing. So punishment should not be physical. Punishment should not be emotional. Right? It, what is important is the child understands what was the mistake and how to rectify the mistake. Number third, what is a good outcome when you rectify your mistake? So when the child is behaving erratic, Either the school teacher or either you parent, you tell, uh, help the child acknowledge that this was a mistaken behavior. This is a good behavior and this is a good reward for the good behavior. Or this is a good outcome for good behavior. Saranya, this question I have included. Saranya has asked the one same question but someone has asked that a child who is facing body shaming in school, what you need to do? You need to do very drastic steps to prevent psychological trauma, which will last for a lifetime and affect many things in the life of the child. You need to talk to principal, you need to talk to the teacher, the other children, parents of the other children. If things are completely out of control, you may need to change the school. Deepa has asked another interesting question. How to manage the kid who says boring very frequently? Yeah. So these kids are uh, attention deficit. They want new things, exciting things every time. Okay. They go bored with everything. This boring, getting bored is the earliest sign of getting depressed. Right. What you need to do, there is a cycle. Okay. They get bored. They don't have anything. There is a vacuum. Then they feel depressed. Then they find something else, something wrong to fill that vacuum. They get depressed. They feel bored. So there is a cycle. 
you need to break the cycle when the child says getting bored tell me what you want to do you want to play you want to do some craft or when you get bored the best part is to study when you get bored study you have to help the child to start that manasvi in that psychotherapy will be required for that child so ramya has asked a difficult question so there is a child who is color conscious mingles only with white children or fair children and because the parent is also suffering the parent also behaves like that it means and uh, uh, teachers are saying that the child does not eat any dark food also my god okay so here the counseling is not required for the child counseling is required for the parent it started from the parents parents have been probably unconsciously or inadvertently talking something or not mingling with people of all the you know, looks right and getting conscious so the child has accumulated that behavior from parents usha has asked an interesting question based on a real case study she is managing so she has asked what if the child uh, is facing emotional turbulence and she doesn't want to share with adolescent doesn't want or child doesn't want to share with the parents what should i do right uh, it is your duty to inform to the parent but you will also tell the parent that this is something the child has said to me in confidence if the child comes to know that i have told you then the child may not take up healing sessions with me right i'm telling you this thing because you are the parent and the child is a minor you should know that okay because if something the child is going through certain scenario which is not good okay a bullying by a boy break up or something horrible things or um, some intimate relationship or something at a young age then parents need to be involved you can or a bad touch or anything you as a counselor cannot go and fight on behalf of the child you cannot do anything okay so what you will continue is you will tell the scenario to the parents and tell them that keep it in confidence and you keep continue healing the child okay and you also tell the parents what are the steps they need to take okay sapnali has asked an interesting question what if the child is arrogant and rigid day by day but the child says that i am normal you are abnormal okay so there is a good possibility that parents are being abnormal okay parents are being demanding or parents are being arrogant or parents are being over sensitive right hey how dare you say this to me take it in a playful manner right uh, the child is child child may say something stupid okay if the child is behaving arrogant every day instead of saying that you are arrogant that is a label that is not the help say that pinpoint exact behavior what they did okay one behavior at a time you know the way you talk to that maid it hurt her it's not good would you like if someone else talk to your mother like that next time if you want to communicate the message what you wanted to communicate something you can rephrase it in another way and tell the child how to rephrase it exactly wordings okay the child doesn't have intention of being arrogant but the child doesn't know how to talk how to communicate how to represent my ideas okay so the child is using whatever words the child can and in those words and behavior it appears arrogant behavior right child doesn't know what is arrogance don't label the child tell the child those words those behavior were wrong and this is a correct way okay that is a good parenting you liked it if you liked it write it
Yeah, so Soumya has uh, come up with a very difficult scenario. So if elder child starts hitting the younger child because parents are giving more importance and love to the younger child, okay, this is very traumatizing. This is this will continue for lifetime between these two siblings, okay. You need to start as a parent means you means you will Soumya will tell the client the parents that you need to give more attention to the elder child also, okay. You need to. Uh, assert you need to tell the child and again I love you you are my first child you are the first love of my life right so the bond which you have cannot be happening with anyone else cannot happen with the second child right that second child is a part of my life. The second child is also part of your life. Like when you were a child, I used to take care of you. Now it is a child. So I need to take care of that more. But that doesn't mean that I care for you less or I give you less attention or I give you less love. Then this elder child will say, no, no, you give me less attention. You are caught. If the child says that, don't say, don't invalidate. No, no, I give you more attention. Wrong. You will say, oh, you feel that way. You feel that I give you less attention. I will make sure that now I give you more attention. Okay. So you are the child. Give me some examples. Then child will start giving examples. And those are very stupid and silly examples. huh? That day, you know, I was hungry and I was waiting for Maggie. And normally you give me Maggie in two minutes. That day you took 10 minutes because you are cleaning the diaper of the that baby. So that is a stupid example. But you know, yeah, you are correct actually. Next time I will see that you get things on time. I give you proper attention. Okay. If something happens like this, I will clear the nappy diaper after five minutes. First, I will give you the food. But if it is something like uh, the younger child is very distressed or something, then I will manage or both of us will manage. So what you are doing is you have started the seed. You have planted the seed. Both of us will manage. So both of us will care for this child, right? You have planted the seed very smartly, right? We will have that topic, good relationship between siblings, all those case studies next Monday, please. All those people who have question about exam, all those things, Please WhatsApp me. You have a lot of time for the exam. Fab exam. Okay. Don't worry about it. Focus on the knowledge. And if you already finished the book, then enroll for marriage relationship counseling, family therapy. You know what is happening is in the market, all the marriage counselors, they talk from their own broken marriages or their own wisdom. They watch some Saas Bahu serial and they learn how to fight properly. Okay. If there is no fight, how to find the reason to fight. So they are teaching the clients how to do that wrong so you learn from us 20 relationship tests very scientific these are our copyright material so you learn from us how to actually identify what is the problem between the couple there, there is a test 20 test each test is for respect trust anger stonewalling criticism compatibility love so there are tests to identify what is the problem between the couple then there this is how you identify the problem between couple then to solve the problem, don't use Sarbo examples. Don't use your bad example. Use couple activities. So there are 100 couple activities which you learn. So it becomes very scientific. All the marriage counselors in the market, they are talking from their own wisdom. They don't know what to do, right? And you learn very systematic, very scientific. You become very unbiased, non-prejudiced marriage counsellor who will run systematic relationship tests identify what is the problem, whether it is a trust, respect, anger. You don't ask, hey, your problem is trust or anger. Hey, shut up. Everything is a problem. Huh? That person is hopeless. They are fighting. So you identify, see, within the trust, these are your problem areas. Out of this 20 question, these are your problem area. And this is how you will solve this. Then it becomes a very good marriage counselor. Right? And the best part in that, in the marriage counseling program, you get to manage life clients. I give you life clients to practice. You like that? Yeah. 
So if you want to enroll, you WhatsApp me tomorrow. If you cannot wait, if you are so urgency, sir, no, I cannot wait till tomorrow. I want to enroll tonight. You can WhatsApp me. I will send you the link. Okay, I will ask my manager to send you link tonight. Okay. Very good, Shruti. Very good. So all those people who have finished their studies and they have attended Nirvana and they are getting bored. So if you are getting bored, the next step is depression. If you get depressed, then you try to find something wrong, things to escape. Then that causes further depression and further boring. So you start studying. You get new knowledge, new skills. Take psychotherapy program, take marriage counseling program. Yeah, revision, good. So there are some who like revision. One time, two times, three times. Done. So it's eight o'clock. I hope you enjoyed. Right. So involve your child today for cooking. And if you want to learn techniques to heal someone's emotional trauma, to heal permanently, okay, then you can talk to me. This program itself will heal you also. Okay. And uh, you'll be in touch with your mentor. For those who I'm your mentor, you can be in touch with me Monday to Friday, 1 to 5 p.m. Even if you have other mentor, you can be still in touch with me. Everyone has my number. Okay. Monday to Friday, 1 to 5 p.m. After 5, no WhatsApp, no calls. If you are emergency, you will visit nearest hospital. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Good audience. Very good questions. Interesting questions. We'll take more case studies. Thank you. And if you want to start practicing on live clients, take up my internship. I will give you live clients to practice on. So that is a way to start your own freelance practice. Okay, you can do it whenever you have time, 10 hours per week. And uh, as per your comfortable, flexible time and all those things, being at home, online consultations. Yeah, I will give you clients coming from your regional background, your language background, your cultural background, your interest. If you want child, if you want parent, if you want adult, if you want hopeless people, if you want people who are less hopeless than you. So all type of clients I can give you. If you want psychotherapy clients, if you want only counseling, if you want easy clients, hey, they want to pay you just for hearing their bakwas. I will give you those clients also. Yeah. In the market, 50% clients, they come to you and they say, ma'am, I will pay you. I want you to listen to all my bakwas because husband is not listening. No. So there are always clients like that. So, but don't start telling your, okay, see you. Hey, you attended live session and still want a recording. Ah, fine. And I record it and, okay, have a great time. See you then. Bye. Those who wish to talk tomorrow, one to five.